Hi everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Thank you so much for joining me at OVAS Latam 2021 at home. Today we are going to talk about continuous security building your pipeline. Let me go ahead and start sharing and we can get started with the presentation. All right. So the topic of the presentation is continuous security, building security into your pipeline. About me, I'm a security advocate or security relations leader at Sneak. Uh, apart from that, I do root for a pro bono work and I'm one of the global board of directors at OWASP, currently serving as a vice chair. I'm also a local leader for Bangalore and leading a couple of projects and a few other things with OWASP. I'm also on the review board of uh, Black at Asia, uh, taking care of Grasshopper India, B Sides Conference in India, and uh, supporting Global AppSec Conference. Let's get started. When we talk about DevSecOps or DevOps, there is always a blame game that goes on, and which we've seen from some so many years. Uh, like when I started, it was all about a waterfall model wherein we used to come as a security person in the end. But then there was a challenge. If there is a critical bug or a high severity bug that used to come in, there is there used to be always, always a trouble, like whether to let go of the application on the internet to the production or not. There was a challenge. Then came DevOps, wherein Dev and Ops came together. They realized that earlier the releases used to be six months, one year, but now that is not going to be the case. The releases have to be quite quick and agile. But when we talk about organizations, there are organizations which are doing multiple releases in a day, which is like with a lightning speed. Now, when we have that, how do we fit security into it? And if there is a security bug that comes into picture or if there is a breach that comes into limelight, who is going to be held re responsible for it? That's the challenge. Now, if we keep, um, keep this blame game, there will be a lot of issues that will be in the picture. Now, when we talk about security, this is what security team thinks that we're just cleaning the, the mess that is that is coming out of DevOps, but that is not the case. I feel this is how it should be, where DevOps and security are working together to make sure that the end goal, which is the organization has the best of applications with the security and everything is running smooth. That's the goal. And when we talk about DevSecOps, visibility is one important aspect of it, which gives us uh, observability, traceability, confidence, and compliance in our applications and the way we work with, uh, with our organizations. And uh, DevSecOps or DevOps is not just that we're going to be fitting something into it one place, but it has to be continuously building into the whole process, starting with the ideation phase when we are thinking of, OK, this is what we need to going through the code phase wherein we are building the secure code and moving on to a point wherein we are actually uh, taking care of all the features, anything which is coming from uh, the previous releases to deploying, to managing, to, to having this whole progression cycle. Now, uh, from the whole phase, we talk about specifically for our uh, general cycle, like static analysis to unit test to integration test to acceptance test. But think about how security um, gets into it and how fast do we get the feedback. So what we need is we need a process which is continuous, wherein we are enabling our developers and the operations team to everyone who is involved in the whole process, starting with the architects to the people who are project managers, anyone who is helping with the scrum meetings, all of them have to be embedded very closely. And not just that, at the same time, we are enabling security team to understand what is there in the infrastructure, because till the time we don't know our own assets, till the time we don't know our own applications, we will always be going into the loop, but not the security loop, not wherein we are managing our, uh, our application life cycle properly, but in a loop wherein we'll keep finding, oh, who did what? Who was the culprit? Where did we find the issue? How should we fix it? And we will not, we will see that there will be a lot of things that will be left behind. And we would not be able to meet the end goal. 
So we need to stop for a review, get the security approval, uh, and not just security approval, like we all have to work together and make sure that we first check the security standpoint. Now, think about when we are using this whole pipeline, which we call it as DevOps pipeline or DevSecOps pipeline, if we use the tools um, from a security standpoint, the tools which developers use, which the operation team use, it becomes even more easy. Uh, for code, there are tools which are available for uh, for the development of application, like IDEs tools. There's Visual Studio is there, uh, Eclipse is there. How about we start using those tools and leverage it to build our own pipeline um, and build the security into the pipeline when it comes to Git. How about having something which can be seamlessly integrated with Git, with Maven, with uh, other uh, platforms that the developers use or the testers use? Going into the CI CD testing monitoring, there are so many open source components which are there which we can leverage and we can then deploy it into the production. Now we're talking about all the cloud native applications and whatnot. So we need to consider the cloud at the same speed, same consistency. Uh, so for coding, we have so many open source components which we can leverage for source code, uh, for source control, for CI/CD, for container and serverless, for platform as a service registries. There's so much available. Now, when we are talking about DevSecOps or setting up something uh, properly into the pipeline, it is not that we are going to only um, have to buy these tools. No, there are so many open source tools which are available. I have uh, created a talk which says that how to run uh, uh, an AppSec pipeline or DevSecOps pipeline using the open source tools, specifically using the OWASP tools that are there. There are n number of wonderful OWASP projects which are there, which we can leverage. And if we don't set up our own pipeline right or DevSecOps pipeline right, what will happen? These supply chain attacks, there are a massive risk Especially, we saw that last year was very, very, very tricky, wherein we saw the supply chain attacks to be on the rise. And even this year has not left behind. There are cases of these supply chain attacks which are there. And people say that now we know about it, but are we going to just um, skip by saying that? No, these attacks are going to be there. when. When we talk about the open source code base, there is 80 to 90% of the code on the internet um, and the applications that we are using is open source. How much code base are we developing ourselves? 10 to 20% max, I'm saying. That's what the, the stats say, that, that's what the research says. And if any of the code, any part of the code, any library, third party component, or even the platform that we're using, that is vulnerable, Aren't we uh, going to see that application is vulnerable, which we have? Absolutely. And same time, when we are talking about the greatest technologies, uh, talking about microservices, containers, Kubernetes, all of this. So um, do we have the responsibility to, making, to make sure that these uh, services that we, and we are using, they are built, deployed, and scaled with the same speed when we are trying to integrate security into it? And another component, infrastructure as a code, which is picking up big time. We're talking about YAML scripts. We're talking about Terraforms and whatnot. When we are talking about Terraforms and, and, and these newer technologies, which are helping us to bring our security, or bring our network early. So that becomes important that we embed security to it. We audit them. We make sure that any flaw that is there in the code base itself. We fix it before we even uh, just push it to the production or when we just spin our in, um, own environment. Now, what happens if we don't do it? If we don't look at it properly, the breaches like this will happen, wherein we might not even get to know that where exactly thing happened, where exactly we went wrong, or how soon we need to respond to it. Now, if you talk about people, uh, they are trying to cascade this information that there is something which has happened. But sometimes the impact is so huge that we don't get to know that where the exploit happened, what, what we were using, how we were using. So that's a big, big, big ma or massive challenge which is there. And what can help us in that? Chaos engineering. Now, what is chaos engineering? Chaos engineering is something where we're trying to test 
the application early, test the environment early in the pipeline so that there are issues that we can avoid. Now, these issues can actually um, help us in getting resolved by making sure that we have a right incident response process, we have the controlled validation in process, and we are observing all of that which is happening early in the pipeline. Not just that, compliance monitoring is not just a checklist, it is a kind of a process that we need to follow to make sure our own environment is secure. Now think about GDPR or any other um, privacy protection laws that we have. If we don't follow what will happen, we will have huge fines. Now, why this has come into picture? If we don't use these compliances as a, just a checklist uh, and, and understand that these are important things, which means we it will help us in bringing security in a much more um, responsible way. And when we talk about compliance monitoring, um, there is another beautiful tool like Chaos Monkey, which came in 2011 uh, by Netflix. I think they, they nailed the point that they need chaos engineering, not just from perspective wherein it just need in the, uh, in the DevOps space, but in the security space as well. And when we talk about DevOps, it's about people, process, and technology together with the right culture. And if we have best of people, best of process, best of technology, but we don't have the right culture in an organization, it is never going to succeed. We need to involve the, the teams to our own discussions that we have with security teams, with CISOs, with CTOs, and whatnot. Like there are so many vulnerabilities that keep coming in. There are so many zero days that keep coming in. But who talks about it? with whom all we share all these information. And especially if I talk about departments, how many um, departments that we interact with. And if we don't uh, share this information, we will be in trouble. Let me tell you one important aspect. Um, so when when I started my career, especially around you know, DevSecOps or DevOps, uh, there was one time where in, there was a major release and uh, there was a scrum call wherein we were invited. But then the scrum call happened early, half an hour early. When we went to the room, there was no one. What was the room? They didn't have a trust on the security team that this will be a smooth release. But over the course of action, we started working together. And uh, after six months, I remember there was another release wherein which was also a major release and they asked us that uh, what are the challenges that could be there how exactly we can try and fix it what are the issues that can be there uh, then this actually uh, a discussion and all those uh, uh, trust building activities helped us big time uh, another important aspect was that uh, there was one critical bug that we found in an application which was lower down to medium but then due to certain updates that bug actually uh, portrayed as a critical bug now this was not detected by us but the development team which realized that this could be a huge concern for their application and if we embrace the automation it is only going to help us it is only going to uh, help us in succeeding in the journey that we have which is called devsecops journey and the only thing that can uh, nurture it to a bigger scale is the security champion. Most of the organizations that I've seen that they've started understanding that we need security champion, and it's not just one person show. It has to be with all the teams working together in a synchrony where we are cross scaling each other, we are empowering each other, we are securing each other instead of blocking it. Uh, like we remember saying no for a go live. Uh, in the past, but now I understand that it, how important it is to manage the production environment of feature and at the same time making sure that there is a secure environment with the proper buy-in from everyone. And it has to be everyone's process. It has to be part of the everyday's process wherein we are changing the mindset. We are not just saying that, okay, this is what it is and you have to follow. No, this is not going to happen. And that's when the ownership and the goal uh, or the uh, Ownership change comes into picture when we are talking about uh, top to bottom or bottom to um, top approach. Leadership is very clear in what they're trying to cascade into the team. And the team is sharing and, uh, and informing the leadership in their own language. And that's how it becomes a team sport. It's not just that, oh, development team, security team, and operation team, all of the, those are teams are working individual. And 
they're talking about it. But let me show you something before we actually talk about these key takeaways. So here, this is uh, an environment that I have set up around Azure pipeline. This is how Azure DevOps looked like. So I just went to Azure DevOps portal. I had I created an organization, and um, some of you might already be using it. So within my organization, I have a project that I have created. Now in the project, there are certain things that I I can look for, and here. I have boards where I can see all the activities that are happening. I can see sprints. I can see if there are any queries. So right now I've not created any sprint, but then there are backlogs which are there. Now, if I talk about uh, repos, repos are the ones that are there, uh, which I've pulled from my GitHub. I can pull it up from any other pl place as well. I can create my own build. I can clone the repository and here, I have set up my pipelines. Now, if I had to show you, there are certain pipelines which are failed, which I failed intentionally. If you see this was working and this got failed. Now, if I go back, these are the three pipelines which are working totally fine. Now, you must be thinking that you're new to it, how to set up a new pipeline. I'll just go ahead and set up a new pipeline here. Now, here my code is into the GitHub. I'm going to go ahead and click on GitHub. So I've set up my own uh, GitHub and uh, I have it integrated into my DevOps pipeline, which is there on Azure. So I can go ahead and uh, click on maybe Java pipeline, Java Goof. And this is the code which is there. It can be anything. And uh, OK. So here, um, I can allow the access for it, like only one repository. I'll just go ahead and approve and install. And what it will what it will do is it'll just go ahead and start taking my details. It'll start working to where, towards setting up my Azure DevOps organization, and I can go ahead and start using it. So here I can figure out what exactly it is. Do I need to start a pipeline? What do I need to? I'll say I'll start a pipeline. There's a YAML script which is there. You can read it. Uh, what is the trigger? It's a master process. So want to latest? Uh, what do I really want? And I can go ahead and save and run. I can go ahead and save and run, and it will start running. If everything goes smooth, it will set up a pipeline for me. And if there are any concerns, it will flag it. But now, where comes the security? That's the major portion here. So now, while it's running, I'm going to go ahead and go to my pipelines and show one of the pipeline which is there, which is, let's say, Pixie. Now, Pixie, I'll go ahead and add it. Um, I'll click here. And I can show you that I can edit my pipeline here. Now, when I added my pipeline, here is the code which is written. So here I have master, I have imported a mode security code rule set uh, and Pixie with it. And if I talk about mode security, it's, it's basically we can say that it's a web application firewall uh, with the core rule set. And here I have configured all of these things, how exactly it's going to go, what exactly it's going to do. It's going to run a Docker container, Apache on it. And if, let's say, I want another security tool like dependency check. So what I can do is I can go ahead and put dependency check. I can type the path name uh, saying that uh, it's a Latin. Saying that it's a demo. It's a demo. It's a demo. Defining the path x y z. Excluding the path, it can be CSV or it can be something else. It, now I go ahead and add it. So here, things will be added as part of the whole process. If you see this, I if I want here, I can add it. If I want it, like in the end. I can put it here and I can go ahead and save it and just save it and it will go. It will start running. Similarly, we can add multiple other tools which are there. Uh, let's say Zap. Zap is there. So we can go ahead and start using Zap. So building a pipeline, it's easy. It is not difficult. It's just that we need to understand what tools we need to add where. Uh, and we need to make sure that we prepare our umbrella before it even rains. So we understand are we using cloud, uh, Azure, AWS, IBM Cloud, or any other cloud? 
and what kind of services they are providing. Are there any open source components? Are there any commercial tools that we already have? Can we leverage the same license there? Um, and how are we going to enable our own teams for it? Because it's not a one person show. Everyone has to be involved. And we might need to create a parallel pipeline to make sure that we have in-depth pen testing. Another important aspect is that uh, there are risks that we would need to accept, but we need to define when are we going to fix all of this. Because in the pipeline, I've seen that people say that we don't want to fail the pipeline. And that's what I'm in support of, because we need to understand our own maturity model. And if we don't have the right maturity model and we say that we're going to fail every bill, we're never going to have the right results for it. So first, let's start fresh. We're not failing the bill. We understand this is where we stand. And then go ahead and start talking about, OK, here we stand. These are the things that we can modify. These are the things that we can change. So understanding the security posture is very, very important. And there are so many articles around DevSecOps, DevOps, what we can uh, we can read. And you can reach me anytime on my Twitter handle, Infosec Vandana, and LinkedIn as well. Now, this was a very short presentation because we just have a, 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 like 30 minutes for it. But what we can do is we can connect back and, and, uh, on my LinkedIn profile, my Twitter. Anytime, I'll be more than happy to have a chat with you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining the session today. I'll be happy to take up any questions.